All right. Turn to Matthew chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16, verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Father, bless your word now as it goes forth. Give us insight and understanding and wisdom in the scriptures, not in man's knowledge, but in yours. In your holy name, amen. There's some powerful statements in this, very, very powerful. Because he said, who do men say that I am? Men still have a lot to say about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it runs the gamut as to who he is. It's amazing when you ask the average man on the street who the Lord Jesus Christ is. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 gave us this warning. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 3. But I fear lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. The Apostle Paul could be very kind on one hand and very rough on the other. In the book of Galatians, he said, If a man comes preaching any other gospel than I have preached, let him be damned. That's what that word means. He in another place says, Let them even be cut off that come preaching some other gospel, some other message than I have preached unto you. The reason he says that is because the gospel of Christ is so very, very important. The word of God, the scripture, the Bible, the 66 books of holy writ is written to present God to you and let you understand who you are and what you're made out of and the one who came to die for your sins. Oh, there's much more in the Bible. But if you read the word of God and you miss that, you've missed it all. So the Apostle Paul says, if he comes preaching any other gospel, let him be anathema. The heart of the gospel is the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So he wanted to get the general consensus. What did they say? What does this group say? What does this group say? He did that so that they would understand that for them to know who he truly was, it had to come from God. It came from God the Father. He said, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. You didn't get it from the Sanhedrin. You didn't get it from the Pharisees. You didn't get it from some Jewish council. You didn't get it anywhere else but from God. And he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the anointed one of God. If we don't start with that foundation, we can build all kinds of a religious structure. But my dear friends, it's a waste of time. It's as dead and empty as it can possibly be. For no other foundation can any man lay than that is our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that has been laid. We must, we absolutely must, we must know who He is. Who is this? 
Who is this man? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews today say that he's a great teacher. Oh, he was a great sage. Oh, what a great rabbi that Christ was. They say that for your benefit. For in their midst they believe what the Talmud has to say about him, which is an entirely different thing. The Muslim, the Muslims say that Christ is a Muslim. They say that he will come back and tear down the cross. They say he will come back and declare to the world that he is a Muslim. That Islam, that Muhammad is the true and right way unto Almighty God. Uh, Notovich, the, the Russian scholar that went down into uh, Tibet in that area, he represents the scholarly aspect of, of the, the Jesus seminar as they meet and on occasion to discover the true Jesus. Who is this man? And of course I haven't read any where they deny that he lived. He did live. No question about that. Only a fool would deny the historicity of Christ. But Notovich represents that crowd. And they're the ones that say, well, you know, he was simply a product of his time. And that he essentially, he essentially hoodooed the people into believing that he was some kind of a great man. And so forth and so on. Who does the Hindu say he is? The Hindu, if he acknowledges, says that Christ is one of his gods. Or they'll say, yes, Jesus even may be an avatar, which is a bodily representation of a deity. You hear a lot about avatars today. So the Hindu says, oh yes, we'll put him in our pantheon of gods. We'll put him over here with the thousands and the millions of other gods that we worship. I'm sorry, my dear friend. He is alone, above, not with any god. He is God of gods. He's Lord of lords. But... Theosophy and Blavatsky taught that he was an ascended master. That he had ascended in great wisdom from the teachers and the ones before. And that he had great enlightenment that he can give us. And if we could only tap into that wisdom, that we could really understand God. So therefore they are called Theosophists. In other words, the wisdom of God. What a crowd. The Gnostics, the witches, the occult world all fit one way or another with Blavatsky and Theosophy. Then there's the Jehovah's Witnesses. Who is he? Who is this man, I say to a Jehovah's Witness? And they'll say, oh, he's a created God. Oh, yes, and God, Jehovah, might have even used him in the creation but nonetheless he is not Jehovah he is below Jehovah Jehovah is the great God and that Jesus Christ is lower than him under him a created God so sad that Charles Taz Russell that started that outfit didn't have a clue who the Lord Jesus was the Mormons if you ask them who is he who is Jesus they'll say why he's the brother of Lucifer they're brothers, no doubt. They're brothers. And there is this long thing. You can go back with them into, <coughs> into the wives that God had. And all of this stuff, esoteric knowledge that the Mormon has. I asked the liberal, who is he? I asked the liberal, who is this man? And he'll say, oh, he's a great teacher. He's an example for us all. He can inspire us with his words. If, if we can only fashion our lives after him and live the way he lived, we can have a much better world. Oh, Jesus, he was a great man. Well, Mr. Liberal, is that all? Is he not God? Oh, no, 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 no. The New Age movement and the emerging church today, they teach, oh, he's a great teacher, yes. The New Age movement says, oh, Oh, yes, he's an ascended master. They're essentially telling you what the what uh, what uh, what theosophy and what the occult world teaches. They're all interconnected. They all deny the one thing, the one thing that is absolutely essential and important today to understand who he is. Let me tell you who he is. This is who I say he is because I've read the Word of God. He's the Lord God Almighty. Amen, and nothing less. Amen. You call me Lord and Master, you do well, he said, for so I am. 
My God! One fell down at His feet. My Lord and my God! Yes, sir! He never moved Him. He never rebuked Him. When He fell at His feet and said, You're my Lord and my God, the Lord Jesus Christ accepted worship from a man. Why? Because He is the Lord God. That's why. Amen. How do I know that today? How do I know who He is? Who told me who He is? Some churches you go to in this town, you'll, you'll go there a long time before you even hear anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you'll hear about the Christ. The Christ. The Christ. As if He's some kind of a historical religious figure. But they don't talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's His full title. I challenge you this morning, this coming week, if you are exposed to any religious teaching, preaching, and instruction, I want you to listen to that crowd that you're talk that's talking to you and see how many times you hear the term, Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to hear it much. Do you know why? When you say He's the Lord Jesus Christ, you're saying He is Almighty God in flesh. Amen. That's who He is. He is. He is. Now there's a crowd today in the apostate church. If you talk to them, they'll say, Oh, I've got a crush on Jesus. Have you heard that one lately? They've got a crush on Jesus. They use all kinds of carnal terms to describe the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's something to use carnal terminology. You know why they do that? Because they don't know Him. That's why. Our one says, He's cool. Why, Jesus is cool. And another one said, Oh, He's hot. <laughs> oh, He's hot. Which one is it? Is He hot or is He cool? They don't know what they're talking about. You see, it depends on how you define hot. And it depends on how you define cool. This generation today is constantly redefining terms to where you don't know what they're talking about. He's not hot and he's not cool. He's God. You hear a lot of preaching today. Now I listened to one the other day and he's a fundamental Baptist. And I mean he preached long and he preached hard about how he's against this and he's against that. He's against this and he's against that. And about every five minutes he'd crack a big joke. And he got on and he continued to preach. He talked about this and he talked about that. And I sat there and I listened to him and I thought to myself, I'm going to listen to this man and I'm going to see what I hear from him. And so I listened to him and on he went and on he rattled. And I began to get a distinct impression that it was not about Christ it was about him for I'd listened to him preach for over 10 minutes and never heard the name the Lord Jesus Christ one time in all of that preaching I never heard anything that exalted the Son of God let me tell you this morning dear friend what you are against does not define your spirituality are you listening you can be against everything the Bible is against, but it doesn't make you spiritual. The Holy Ghost is the only one that can make you spiritual. He's the only one that can change your life. You see, 2,000 years ago, the Pharisees had a list of what they were against. And I'm telling you, they had a list. Believe me. But they were twice dead and plucked up by the roots. They were whited sepulchers. They stood on street corners and prayed long prayers. And my dear friend, together, around for people to observe how righteous and how holy and how clean they really were. In plainer words, it was all about them and not about the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening? He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I am nothing. I never have been anything. And if I ever amount to a hill of beans, it'll be because of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul said, I am who I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. It is not how cute I am. It is not how I crack jokes. It is not how I can get up and show you my, my, my home grown wisdom and all of that garbage. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. If I spend 30 minutes in here this morning preaching to you from the Bible and I don't exalt the Son of God, then my dear friend, I've wasted my time. There's no other way to God but through His Son. Are you hearing me? You can talk about standards. You can talk about separation. You can talk about how right and righteous you are. But it's all dead works without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you today, the Son of God is the only way to the Father. 
And I'm telling you right now that there are people when you preach like this, they spit it right back in your face. Because you're full of your own righteousness and not the righteousness of the Son of God. In everything spiritual about my life, I'm an absolute failure till the hand of Jesus reaches down and takes hold of me. I couldn't make it without Him. I can't preach without Him. I can't live without Him. Amen. You say, well now, preacher, are you preaching against standards? No, my dear friend. I just want them to come from the right well. Oh, no, I'm not preaching against separation. I just want you to know who are you separated from and to. I'm not preaching against righteousness. Oh, no. You got me entirely wrong. I want you to understand something. Whose righteousness counts? Amen. And how does that righteousness count for you? Are you listening? This is the nuance. This is the key. This is the bridge. This is the line that's being crossed today because everything is being smudged. It's, it's uncertain. It's unclear. And the preacher becomes the centerpiece. I watched him and I thought, man, I can't believe this. This guy spent all this time and he's one of the greatest fundamental pastors around. I mean, he's a big shot in the movement. I don't name names because I don't belong to that crowd out there in Tempe, Arizona that drags the names of God's men down in front of people because there are people that love this man, respect this man. But I do this to try to teach you a lesson. It's not about me. It's about the Son of God. Amen. Glory to God, get that. It's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It was to Adam when he had sinned and the world turned black. He had nowhere to go or nothing to do. What am I going to do now? If the Lord Jesus Christ came with a lamb skin to cover him up. Have you been covered by that lamb skin? I have. It took the shedding of blood for that lamb skin to cover him. Amen! And that blood has been shed at the cross at Calvary. Did you know that this insane crowd today is preaching that the death of Christ on Calvary and the blood shed at the cross is not sufficient to cleanse you of your sins and save you that he had to go to hell and while he was in hell he was tortured by the devil and while he was in hell being tortured by the devil that's where he made the atonement that is absolutely pure unadulterated blasphemy for you've denied the work of the cross and when he bowed his head and said father it is finished he meant finished to tell us die is the word you can't add anything to it you can't take anything from it it's the cross that separates the saved and the lost. Yet they get up and because they're so well known. Some of these men are known nationwide. Some of them are worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. They have their own private airports. They come and go and live as kings. And they get up in front of the people and tell them that the cross of Christ was not sufficient. That he had to go to hell. And he had to suffer down there being tortured by the devil. Let me tell you something, dear friend. Satan cannot torture Christ. Amen. Ain't going to happen. Adam knew him. He knew the Christ of the Old Testament, so he did. Let me ask you a question today. Have you ever been in a place like David was when David sinned against God and David cried out from his soul and sinned against thee and the only, O oh Lord, have I done this sin? He understood what holiness was about. He realized he violated the righteousness and holiness of God. And yet he got right. Oh, yes, he said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Heal the bones that thou hast broken. So Christ did. Have you ever had your bones healed? Have you been restored? Some of you are hunting and you're looking and you're drifting. You're trying to find this and find that because you've never been there. You've never drunk from the well that will never run dry. You've never had the blood applied to your soul. You talk to people today and this world of religion Religion is so deceptive and so deceiving. They'll see angels dust falling around them. They'll see waves and moves of the Holy Spirit. They'll see people slain in the Spirit, barking like dogs, rolling around in the aisles. 
they'll see all kinds of spirit manifestations. They get caught up in all of this stuff today. And you ask them a clear cut simple question. Tell me when you got saved. How you born again. And they can't answer you. You know why? Because they're not born again. But they are being deceived. This country, this world is being brought under the shadow, brought under the umbrella of a deceiving spirit of doctrines of devils. It's seeping throughout all the churches. People are starved to death for the truth. They want the Word of God. They want Christ and Him crucified. But they're getting this miracle. They're getting this manifestation. They're getting this spirit they're getting another Jesus they're getting another spirit and they're getting another gospel and the apostle Paul warned them don't let that happen watch he said watch he said earnestly contend for the truth that was once delivered unto the saints amen this Jesus today he's cool or hot depending on who you talk to let me ask you do you know Mrs. Frank Breck? Does anybody in here know Mrs. Frank Breck? I wouldn't know her if I bumped into her on the street. But she's not around today. She lived in 1927 and she wrote face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold Him, Jesus Christ who died for me. Only faintly now I see Him with the darkling veil between. But a blessed day is coming when His glory shall be seen. What rejoicing in His presence when our banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be plain. Face to face, oh blissful moment, face to face to see and know, face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ who loves me so. God bless you, my dear sister. I'll meet her in heaven. Amen. Yes. Almost a hundred years ago, this dear lady wrote this song, and she wrote it from the perspective of a child of God, really born again. That's what we're missing today. I ran out the building and found a seat upon the rock, this rock that overlooks some hills. I cried and cried and cried as all my life flashed before me. Every moment I ever spoke against God now became a confession for my transgressions, everything I'd ever done in ignorance now confession to receive his love to allow his blood to cleanse me this without any biblical understanding this repentance led totally by the Holy Spirit I asked the Lord to live in my heart I asked to receive salvation it was amazing I sat on the rock and let him heal me became his died to myself and arose a whole new person everything looked different the colors and sounds were brighter less heavy it was so obvious I was made new I'll meet that sister by the river I'll meet her by the riverside one day when God rolls back the scroll of heaven and you're caught up with him in the clouds to meet them in the air you'll see the myriads of the millions upon millions of your brothers and your sisters you'll see the church age as it goes all away from Christ down to us you can no doubt see the historical change of the saints of God from that period until this period you'll realize finally for the first time in your life that we are at the end of the end of the end of the church age. It's just about finished. Glory to God, I'm going up when he comes down to get us. I belong to that body. These are my people. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I know whom I have believed. Amen. Day by day it gets sweeter. Day by day it gets nearer. Day by day I love Him more. Day by day I bless Him and praise His holy name. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't say enough of Him. <coughs> 
stand for him this morning. If I lived a thousand lives, I'd want all thousand of them to glorify God. I'd want them to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know me and forget me, you've forgotten nothing. If you never meet me, that's no big deal. But don't ever miss the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one that will get you into glory. He's the one that can lead you to the Father. He's the one who knows who the Father is and where the Father is. There's only one, not Michael, not Gabriel, no cherubim, no seraphim, nothing, 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 nothing. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can take you to the Father. And one day I'll gather under His wing. I'll be carried by there into the presence of the Father because I know whom I have believed. What a sweet, 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 blessed thing there is to know your sins are forgiven, to know you're saved, to know you're born again. It ain't how cute I am. It ain't how much I can crack a joke. It's not how much I can strut up here and make you think that I'm God's wisdom for the earth. Oh, no, no, no. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm here today and I'm gone tomorrow. I show up for a little while and I pass from this scene. I'm a passing vapor. Oh yes, but I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. Listen to me, Fundamental Baptist Church. You listen to me, Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. You're dying. You're losing it. You're strutting around on the stage. You're barking at everything. You don't have the power of God on you. The Holy Spirit is not there. And you're not lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. What do we do, preacher? Come back to the one that saved you. And there, start again. Amen. Amen. I love Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's Master. He's everything. If I drop in front of you this morning, I want you to understand something. It's been a fulfilled, satisfied life. He's never failed me. He's been good to me. There are times that my heart starts jumping all over the place. And I think, maybe... Maybe it's going to quit. And you know what I say? I say, Lord Jesus, I love you. And he said, I love you too, son. I said, Lord Jesus, if I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Could you give me just enough time to get over and kiss my sweetheart goodbye? That's all I'm asking for. And maybe my, for my little girls around, maybe my little girl would be in church when her daddy drops. And she could be there and I give her a little kiss goodbye. And I'll see you by the river. <laughs> I'll meet you by the river I don't know how long I'm going to live but I know who I live in I know who I believed folks it's good let me tell you something now that was in 1973 that God saved me it's as powerful today as it was then it's as real now as it was then he'll change you move into you and you'll become a new creature in Christ Jesus your nature will change and if that hasn't happened to you, you may be full of religion. You may be a good fundamental Baptist. You might even be a good fundamental independent Baptist. But you're lost without God. You might even be a pastor. But if Christ has not moved into your soul, and you've never been born again, you don't know Him. Do you know Him? The Lord said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. You ever ask yourself this question? I wonder what God told Peter that. You reckon Peter was praying? Or was maybe Peter just observed one of the miracles? Or maybe they were sitting by the fire one night? Who knows? The Bible doesn't say. It doesn't say when or how. It just says who. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my Father which is in heaven. My dear friend, please. I can scream and yell and kick and stomp and sweat. Until I drop dead, and I can't make you believe in Christ. And I can't make you believe who He is. And I can't, I can't make you understand that. I can't do it. If I thought I could do that, I'd be arrogant. I think it was in my hands. It's not my hand. But if you ever knew, if you ever do know who He is, if that day ever dawns in your soul and the light comes on, and for the first time in your life you say, He's the Savior. He's the Lord Jesus. I don't need any of this other stuff. All I need is Him. 
that didn't come from man. That came from the Father. No man knows the Father but the Son. No man knows the Son but the Father. Since the Father is the only one who knows the Son, only the Father can tell you who the Son is. Make sense? So if you know today who the Lord Jesus Christ is, who told you? I know the preacher, thank God for the preachers, hallelujah to glory to God. But my friend, I can't tell you who he is. I can tell you with human words. But the Father is the only one that can make it real in your soul. Who you know who he is. Lord, I've delivered my soul. And I thank you for standing with me and giving me strength to preach. I marvel, Heavenly Father, I couldn't do this during the week. I'd be so tired. For some reason... You've made it possible for me to get up here in this pulpit on Sunday and preach. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why I know. I know, Lord, I know. That's what you've got me here for. And so you have strength for me to do this. And I thank you for it. <laughs> I bless you for it. Now, Lord, it's not about me anymore. Push me aside. Get me out of the way. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ. Do these people know him? Many of them do. I don't doubt it for a minute. There are many people in here this morning that know him. They've known him longer than I know him. They know him well. They love him. They serve him. They're my brothers and my sisters. And I thank you for it. But Lord, there are some sitting in here today. They don't know him. They think they do. They've got an intellectual knowledge about him, but they don't really know him. They don't know him. Lord, glorify yourself now. Speak to them.